Monday Night Football at MetLife Stadium. New York holds a special place in the heart of the Seahawks. To maintain momentum on the road, consistency will be the key. In week four, depth has already played a factor in the Seahawks season. Great depth is a team effort and study. Preparing individually is one thing, but to be nimble as a team can make all the difference. In a league as physical and competitive as the NFL, the players who may live a play away must stay ready for opportunity to knock. before the Seahawks bye. It's wheels up in New York to face a Giants team hungry for any kind of success, especially at home under the Monday night lights. What's your goal for the season? Win. I mean, there's, I mean that's why you do it. You, get, you do it to compete and to win. If it's a drill, if it's to win at practice, to win that rep, to, to win. And if you get better every day, you're probably gonna win more than you're gonna lose. For Julian Love, Returning to New York and the team he captained and spent four seasons with is an opportunity for comparison. I was happy I could see a lot of people. You see the players, I have friendships and relationships with players and that will always continue. Um, but it's those people that I won't probably see ever <laughs> again that, that made it uh, pretty uh, pretty special. We're heading out and let's see if we can put together a terrific build up to, to Monday night and, uh, and play really great football. I know they're hungry and they're home and all that kind of stuff so it's a big challenge for us. I've been around, you know, Coach Carroll for a long time, and so he's got into our minds that it's just a game, and I really believe that. You know, at the end of the day, it's just a game. You know, it's going to be a fun game, a lot of people watching, and you just want to put your best foot forward. So coming here for the first time, first few weeks was a little different for me because Pete Carroll is one of a kind. He runs a, a team, an organization, a business like no one else I've ever been around. And so just that initially uh, is different. The, the people are different. Uh, the swag, the energy, the, the fan culture is different. Going back and just being in that game, it kind of gave me a little sense of closure, honestly, um, just to see, okay, this is where I was and this is where I am, you know, and I, I like being where I am right now. You know, you notice from places that, that when um, coaching staffs bring energy into the building and it kind of, you know, players will feed off of that. And I think, you know, the same can be said for Gary, you know, Coach Pete, he comes in, team meetings on the field with just, you know, energy like no other, like you, you love to see and you love to play for Gary. Break him down today. Break him down today on his birthday. Say Roderick Thompson. Break him down. On road trips, it's part of Coach Carroll's mindset of preparation that players visit the stadium after walkthrough. It removes the shock and awe of game day and allows some of the jitters to subside. Yeah, sir. <laughs> hey, Hawks on three. One, two, three. Hawks. Monday night football, MetLife Stadium. The sun sets on a perfect fall day as lights, cameras, and stars come out. It's showtime.
comes from the shotgun, hands it to Brightwell, left side, not much. The Seahawks have held on fourth down, Seattle ball at their own 27 yard line. As a matter of fact, I'm not that forgiven, because you did this to yourself, that's a bad decision. Jones gonna throw, this time he gets hit on a blitz, and knocked down a corner blitz by Witherspoon. The first quarter is competition throughout. It's looking like zeros going into the second quarter. But scoring isn't the only way to change momentum. Play fake Jones, steps away from a sack. Being chased, gets hit, ball comes out. Bubble Seahawks, Seahawks have it, it's Brooks. Spins out of a tackle, fights his way down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the seven yard line. The Seahawks are in business. A strip sack by Mario Edwards Jr. and the recovery by Jordan Brooks sets the table for the entire narrative to shift. It's just another day at the office, um, you know, practicing uh, the scramble drill and, you know, Gino put in the right place um, and I made a late reaction like Lockett made last week with the late hands and um, anytime a defender's close with him, I mean, just catching the ball late so they don't have time to get their hands in and knock the ball down. Steps up in the pocket, scrambles away to his right side, looking to the end zone, fires a dart in the back of the end zone, DK, does he have to feed it in us? Touchdown, Seahawks! DK Metcalf with the rope-a-dope in the back of the end zone. So all of a sudden, this is getting to be a kind of a serious situation for the Seahawks. Jamal Adams being lost for the game with a head injury earlier. Now Phil Haynes is down. Obviously, you know, we had the uh, injuries went down. We lost, you know, Phil and D. Lou early. And, uh, you know, they came up to me and said, you know, can you play left guard? I was like, you know, wherever y'all need me, you know, as much as my versatility I can use to help us in whatever way we need, that's what I try to do. The old line is a tough job. Beyond the physical demand of consistent and constant hits, it requires a unique mentality. When you're a backup, you have to know more than one role. And if you're an inside player and you can, if you can snap the ball at center, well, you should be able to play guard because you understand because you have to make the communication to tell the guard what to do. So you understand the rules. So I had all the confidence in Evan and he was just like, all right, wherever you need me, I'll go. And that's, to me, that is personifies the whole room, but just the, okay, what am I doing? What do we need? Okay, I'll do it. Like that to me, that O-line mentality, which these guys have embraced. Like, we're, hey, I can go to right, he put him at left. They're thinking about others and making themselves uncomfortable first to help somebody else maybe be a little more comfortable. The trenches are a dangerous place. And the constant threat of injury means the ability to shift in strategy is vital in that position group. With Geno now out, Drew Locke steps in at quarterback behind a different O-line. Empty backfield. Slots to both sides, and Drew's going to take it straight ahead on a quarterback draw. He slides down. I'm uh, so proud that, that we have guys that, that can answer the call and play at the top level and, and give us a chance to, to compete in these games. Just gives us the confidence that we're going to keep getting better. So we're not a finished product. We're just getting rolling. Giants look like they want to blitz. They do. Quick throw far side. Ball is caught by Metcalf, who tries to run over the defensive back. He's got a first down. It's the snap, four-man rush by the Giants. Lock is going to scramble, throws near side, wide open. Fat, first down up the near sideline. Still up the sideline, still up the sideline. Holy catfish! The composure of the next man up, paired with a brilliant play by Noah Fant, leads to a touchdown in Drew Locke's first regular season drive. Even if it doesn't stand as a touch, it's still going to be a big first down. Hand off the walker inside. He is in. Touchdown, Seahawks! In the backfield, shotgun formation stands up, throws a swing pass far side, and Julian Love comes flying up out of the secondary to make the tackle on the receiver. Has a slot to his left side, play fake. He's going to throw left. Ball's almost picked off. Oh, Greek Woolen. He's beside himself. He knows he should have had a pick six on that one. And we will have ended this first half of play at MetLife Stadium. I'm not sure who they're booing, but knowing the New York fans, I got a pretty good idea. Their Giants only put three points on the board. The Seahawks have 14. The players have done it. They've worked all off season. And again, you get the culture of the room of being true professionals where hey, this guy could come in and take my job, but I'm selfless and I don't care because I want to make the team successful. So again, I just go back to those guys putting in the work. Yeah, early on, it's, you know, it's something that, that you're kind of feeling out, you know, that first game, it's, uh, 
haven't really played together. As they start to settle into the offense, I think you've really started to see that, you know, the explosiveness with Ken and just kind of add that one-two punch with Zach. And I think they've really started to, you know, kind of compliment each other with what they do well and they've, you know, both done a fantastic job. At the start of the second half, Geno Smith is back and wastes no time. Toss, comes back to the middle of the field, Walker gets skinny, breaks through, first down, still on his feet, inside the 40-yard line of the Giants. Charbonnet in the backfield now, speaking of the bludgeon, and he gets the toss, comes right side, turns up field, got some running room, 30, stiff arms the man, runs over another, down to the 25, Seahawks bench goes absolutely berserk. And with the adjusted O-line, the one-two punch of Walker and Charbonnet hits home. Seattle's going to blitz. Jones steps up. Jones gets hit. Jones is going to go down. Back near the 11-yard line. Bobby Wagner. Both sides of the ball continue to execute, with the defense racking up sack after sack and threatening to break the 37-year-old franchise record of 11 sacks in a game. And then, arguably the best play in football, Witherspoon nearly breaks another franchise record with a 97-yard pick six. Right after that tackle, I kept thinking, I feel a pick about to happen. Like either the next play or, or the play after that. Something just felt like a pick was in the air. I thought it was gonna be me, obviously selfishly. Spoon gets his hand on one and it's taken off. And at this point, it's late in the drive. I'm gassed. <laughs> All of us are kind of gassed. Throw, throws near side. Ball picked up. Witherspoon comes near side. Down the sideline. Joe chasing him. He comes back inside. Picks up blockers. Still being chased, Witherspoon far side, 20, 15, 10, 5, he is in, holy catfish! Just to make a key block, just effort play, just try to get my guy in the end zone, and so yeah, Spoon's first, um, and I'm happy I can be a part of it. Witherspoon dinks him into throwing, and then picks it off and goes from about the three yard line, the length of the field, are you kidding me, 97 yards! The record, held by Bobby Wagner, by the way, is a 98-yard pick six. I think it was, what, two sacks, a pick. Um, I think he had a, a nice tackle on a, on a crush play on the outside. He played really, really well. He's really, um, you know, coming into his own every time he plays. Um, he's very, very smart. And, you know, every time he steps out there, he gets smarter. Remind him that a 97-yard pick six is one short of the T record. I think I'd be able to mind him. Jones from the shotgun, takes the snap, stepped up in the pocket, oh my goodness, Bobby Wagner, say hello to Daniel Jones. Here comes the rush, Jones goes down again, Chetanosu gets to it first. He gets a little bit of help from the front side tackle, Draymond Jones. Jones wants to throw, pulls the ball down, he's going to get hit and go down again. He goes down again, it's Miles Adams who makes the sack one more time. I'm losing count, the ninth sack of the game. As Giants fans flood from the stadium, the Seahawks defense comes alive. Jones has time, stands strong, now he gets rid of it. Overthrown, intercepted, it's Diggs, breaks free, bringing it up to the near side. 40, midfield, tackled at the 45 of the Giants. It is becoming a feeding frenzy by the Seahawks defense. Everybody's taking their shots. Vet Quandre Diggs collects an interception as the sacks continue to add up. That felt great. Uh, <laughs> there is no better feeling than doing what we did on Monday night uh, in New York. It, it, was, it was really cool. And yeah, we just all were just balling. On first and 10, Whoa. Jones. Jones, Jones goes down, Boye Mafe. Here comes the blitz again, Jones steps up, Jones goes down, ball is out. Jones goes down again, the Giants recover. The record for the Seahawks, 11 sacks, it ties that record now. Clock is gonna tick down, the Giants say we've had enough. Witherspoon is dancing out in midfield on the New York logo. And you know what, he can. not They'll let him dance, because he's earned that. The, the mindset, the swag, the enthusiasm is exactly what we wanted, and that felt amazing. I was beaming on the way home uh, from that flight, uh, from that game, because, yeah, it, it, was, it was special for me, for sure. 
mean, it's just going into the bye week. I know we're dinged up right now, and, uh, you know, it would be a good time for us to take a break and, you know, to recoup and, you know, just get everybody back healthy. I didn't like it before the season started, but now, uh, you know, with the injuries and, uh, you know, the ding, dinged up players that we have right now, I think it's a perfect time for us to have a bye week. Week five is considered an early bye in the NFL, which usually comes with its own challenges when the bulk of the season lies after the break. But this year, it seemed to hit at a perfect time. It gives everyone a chance to rest up ahead of the next road challenge in Cincinnati. For Julian Love, that means connecting with his family and roots in Seattle. It's a small world. I don't have family in a ton of places, but Seattle is one of them. And uh, so, yeah, it's really cool that I, I don't know, have a, a, a little love, a little peace in a place that is a fixture uh, in Seattle. I got the prawn sandwich and looked some money in the bank. First time having it? Yeah. Yeah, I usually get the Caribbean roast. We were doing a sound interview. Mm -hmm. You had just pretty much moved pretty new to Seattle. And you yeah. just in passing were like, oh yeah, my family owns it. I don't know if you remember all of our faces, but we all were I like, did. what? Yeah, really random fact. Uh, opened up a restaurant, has, has some success out here. It's my Aulita, my grandma's uh, brother. Um, and yes, yeah, so now the, the sons, so my mom's cousins, uh, they run a restaurant called Un Bien. I know what I, I didn't know. Um, well, you know, Seattle's a big city. You know, I don't know if anybody's been out, you know, to every every spot. Um, yeah. So. So your grandma's brother. Yeah, Lorenzo Lorenzo. First location in '94. Yeah. So this is a <laughs> I love where I was uh, born then. Uh, yeah. So my my grandmother, my Olita, is what I call her. Um, is from Cuba. She was born and raised in Cuba. Um, and she has five siblings, and the youngest sibling is a, was a boy. His name is Lorenzo. Lorenzo. He came over and ended up getting adopted to a family in Washington. So he was raised out there. He was working, was growing, uh, opened a few restaurants, and then kind of found his niche in like a dive, like a sandwich shop, lunch on the go type of spot, um, which is Unbien. Some of the, the key uh, ingredients, the secrets, um, were all him. Um, so like the black beans, the marinade, um, for the longest time was only, he was the only one who knew it. And so he obviously told his sons who now run Un Bien. I don't know, I think that's just everything you want and want your family to become. Right now they have, you know, he has grandkids and it's just, uh, it's pretty special. Uh, not to be weird, but how did you two meet? We started dating in high school. Well, I think like, it's so funny because when we first started dating, my, my dad and my brother at his high school games, I would just go to the games with my friends and be in the student yeah. section, but Julian and I were like newly dating. But yeah. like after the game, I'd see my dad and my brother who played on Julian's football team oh, nice. and, they, and they'd be like, they they used yeah. to have to tell me so that when I saw him after the game, I would be like, you'd be like, I know what's up. <laughs> because I was just socialized. <laughs> yeah. We found out we were pregnant two days before moving on to Seattle. We were just getting used to Seattle, so it was a lie at first. Um, but now, coming back to uh, Seattle, especially after the bye week, it's like, okay, we're home now. It's like, it feels just comfortable, it feels familiar. We're excited just to be able to grow and let our son know that, you know, this is a, a part of my history, our history, and this is our family's kind of life and legacy. When, they, when the team offered you, like, would, it, were you interested in the Hawks before, or was it just one of those things where, like, mm -hmm. it was a good deal and you know the team? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, no, so it was that, that second option. But he's like, they, they seem to like you more here, even if there's, like, an incident. <laughs> but he's like, out there, it's like, if they were down half the field, like, the stands would clear out. Yeah. They were just, like, 100%. abandoning you. 100%. But I'm just like, damn, that's really it, cool. It's a doggy dog world, though, over there. Sure. <laughs> because also, like, there's two teams for every sport in New York. We didn't know anything else, so I think it like we didn't think it was that bad while we were there, and then you come here and you're like, <laughs> yeah. "Whoa, these things are supportive." <laughs> and that true. was all that we knew. Just how it shook out these first four weeks, uh, we just needed to buy. We needed a break. We needed guys to reset. Um, we we started the year strong, three and one. Uh, that's what you want going into the buy, and now we know. Okay, we're in a good position. How can we extend this? Um, and it allows us to all reset. We're all a, a few new faces around here, like myself, and so it allowed us a chance to get that first, you know, period of getting to know each other really still, 
Um, and now we know what we have and we can move forward. Throughout my, my time coming into the league, I was undrafted, you know, goals change each year. And initially it was, you know, just make a 53 however I can. Um, you know, I was able to do that multiple years in. And then from there, it's, you know, develop into contributing to the team, whether that's, you know, the sixth guy, next man up, and was able to do that. And then it was kind of into, you know, being a starter and then going out in the field and, you know, performing the best you can, taking it day by day, understanding, you know, what you did good that day, what you did bad, and building on the good and correcting the bad. So, you know, my, my, I, I kind of don't have like a specific goal as just take things day by day and improve each day is my, my goal for a season. And then, I mean, obviously the team, it's got to be, you know, to keep winning and goal to the in the mountain. You got to take it week by week, but it's to make the Super Bowl win. So that's got to be the team goal. Rested and ready. The Seahawks travel for another championship opportunity in week six against the Bengals.